Welcome back to another video. This may look like a standard Cavalier Turbo, but I can tell you it's not. This has been fully overhauled by Card SOS. And I can tell you the work and engineering that's got into this to make it so special is top notch. So Darren is able to go out again in his dream build that he's owned since 2007. So this is the Card SOS Cavalier Turbo. Normal as you would do, right? Okay. Also, the V post is there, right? Okay. Just behind here. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a latch. Yeah. I see. It pushes that. Yes, I see. I see. Wow. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? That's surreal. It looks very surreal there, doesn't it? With the post gone. This is super surreal. Being sat in a car with no V post, especially a Cavalier. Cavalier. Nothing. I'm, I'm trying to take it all in, trying to absorb what's been done. Now I've kind of seen the internals and how it all works. It's very clever, but very, very simple. On the principle of, I suppose my engineering mind is going in depth of how would I do it? What would I use? And the way it's been done has been executed to a reasonably good standard to be fair and very very simple were when i watched the episode of card sos as i think a lot of people will have done is think about the the trials and tribulations you're going to get on doing something like taking a b post out and then you also go into your headers how are you going to reinforce it how are you going to latch the doors how's everything going to work and you build it in your head and this is not how i would have done it but this is a lot more simpler way of doing it and it works and hats off to rick wood for doing it in six weeks the complete build taking the b post out refurbing the engine painting the full car in six weeks it shows the dedication of rick wood's team for them all to jump on this because they must have been on it for hours daily to get it done so let's dive into the doors and i'll open this front one so you can have a look at what you see and obviously then we'll open both the doors so you can see how they fully work to open this door and to look in, if you didn't know, standing back, you would never tell. Other than the drop sill section here, because obviously they've still kept the B post. Because to remove the B post, as probably a lot of car guys will know, is a massive job. What is also nice is even gone to the little extra miles of putting ceiling trims along the bottom of the doors to seal against this edge, even though doors technically don't have them anyway, but that's just to help where he's taken out this sill section. Now let's open this back door and let's see how this full door mechanism works. But what's nice is at the end of the build, Rick, as I said, has gone a bit of the extra mile, in my opinion. I don't know if the other cars and car SOS get this kind of uh, look, looked after is. Rick has delivered a full book of the full build of the full restoration, as well as having a really nice picture done for the wall for Darren's house of the Cavalier restoration. So as you can see, the B post has been taken out as we've seen with the TV episode. So let's dive in and have a look what's been done. So on the bottom of the doors, they've obviously welded the B post into to attach to the rear door. They've then put what are called pop latches. A lot of people use these on bumpers and panels where it's literally a simple ball socket which locks in and then you press the button and it pops out. So obviously these will be guided into these channels which are a pop lock which are there. Now I'll show you the top one because you'll be able to see what I mean by a pop lock. That's the pop lock. So as the, the ball bearing goes in, it locks in and holds it into place, which is the same down here, which is there. 
but then they put it on this extended bar which then that allows you to press the button to pop the bottom pop lock which again is a nice simple ingenious idea because again when i was sat watching the episode I was expecting to use door latches, putting a door latch here in this area and a door latch in this area where you'd have to pop them. But that there is a very, very simple way of doing it. And then obviously you've got the V channel, which obviously guides to the bottom of the doors, which I'm going to guess these have all been fabricated from the original sills, I would have thought. They probably would have spliced them out and welded them on and put the, the pop lock on. The top section, probably the same, because... They've notched out the top section. I would have thought they would have taken... See, so yeah, because you can see where the original post edge is. So they've left the original post edge and they will have taken probably a section of it to guide it in. So you've only got a mill clearance either side to pop in to the locking pop lock up there. I, I can't praise the work enough. The only thing I said to Darren, I'm going to 3D print him a, a cover for there because that's my OCD is to put a trim on but other than that the way they've leveled the the sill so you can get the wheelchair in and out and the amount of reinforcement i've seen on the pictures to reinforce that section it has to be very substantial because obviously taking the b post out of a car the you're taking a lot of the structure out uh, and strength let's look at the the rear door mechanism so it looks like they've laser cut multiple plates to stack them up rather than have one plate machined brush insert but bushes so they don't wear i would have thought something like frost for bronze so it work hardens cut the section out welding them in the back so then the door slides in and out on these bushes which in theoretically if this is something like frost for bronze it work hardens so basically what that means is the more you move it the harder this material will react and it doesn't wear down as much because the last thing Darren needs is, say, a year, two years down the line of opening and closing this door is for these bushes to wear and for the door to drop because it will not lock. Nice little 3D printed look, what look like just dirt scrapers to scrape the dirt off to stop it clogging up if the door ever gets jammed. But no, very, very nice little work. Again, even down this area where the original latch would be, can't see all the way in, but I would have thought these would have gone quite further into the door because you can see a couple of bits of welding, quite further into the door to stop the door from dropping and to spread the load of the door because this pivot point to that pivot point is massive so at any strength of movement here is going to be pretty damn you know accentuated over in this area so the b post has obviously been welded all box sectioned off has been welded to the door so when you close the door it still looks like the b post is still in place like I say, I, I, I think I've overcomplicated this in my head of how it's going to work. And as sometimes the simplest ways of building things are probably the, sometimes the best ways. Well, we told you to fall off, should you do it? I'm not getting in it. <laughs> no, I thought you was home. Oh, no, I'm, no. I'm right, it's okay. only one person right. job. Right. Okay, go on. Tires are flat, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. oh, we did, honestly, we did this really well before. Right, right, go on, there we go. You lift it, don't push it. That's it. You lift it, don't push it, there you go. That's it, and then it clicks around there. Right, okay, so you don't push it down, you lift that up. I'm pushing when I should be pulling. <laughs> There's too many pushy pulley levers. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Oh, then you've got your feet right there. Wow. Awesome. That design on that chair is unbelievable, isn't it? It's fabulous, yeah. Right, so while the Card SOS goes around this, the carers put in an application to the Card SOS people. Obviously, they must get hundreds of thousands of applications, and over the space of you know a couple of months, messages backwards and forwards saying they were interested, can we come and speak to you, get a bit more information, and then as it went from there, they accepted the car. They wanted to do this one as one of their biggest builds. And the Card SOS production team openly admit doing this conversion was a make or break for them. So let's go into a bit of engine spec on what's been done. It's a fully rebuilt C20 LET. It has a hybrid uprated turbo. It has phase two EDS chips. It's been fully rebuilt and it also has a Rickwood CNC ported cylinder head. And another little bit of 
information about the CNC port and that Rick Wood does is what some people won't know is, to my knowledge, he ended up with the cylinder head off the chassis number one Cavalier we maintain of Jim Pocklinson's. He took the cylinder head off that, scanned it, and reproduced it on his CNC machine. That's what I'm told, that's what I know from my knowledge. So obviously Jim's is a Swindon racing head, so technically this should have the same port size, the same machining as the Swindon racing one. So he's had the head done. The gearbox has been, I would say, I won't say it's been rebuilt because if anyone knows me personally will know I own every single S28 on the planet, but it's all been cleaned, refurbished, and redone to really nice high standard. The car made, I think just over 300 horsepower at around a bar of boost, which if anyone who knows these cars know that's pretty good numbers. I remember I had to run something like 18 to 21 PSI just to make them type of numbers. So that's really impressive for this car and to show how healthy it is. And another interesting fact, which is always, if anyone owns, who owns an LET or an XE, they always leak. And this one, has a slight leak on it. Fantastic. Even though it's been redone, it doesn't matter what you do or what gas key you use, they always get a slight weak. So as the, the Cardi Swiss production team openly admit, it's one of their make or break moments. And obviously, with my personal um, going on Scrappy Challenge in the past, when you watch Cardi SOS, you automatically think a lot of the arguing and all that is for television. But it turns out that this car caused a lot of controversy and there was a lot of arguments on whether they should cut the b-post out to do the conversion because technically with being car guys once you cut a b-post out there is no going back you're either going to destroy the car or it's going to end up right so there was a massive discussion between the staff friends and family the actual production team tim and fuzz rick himself whether they should have cut this b-post out or not because if it all went wrong, it could have technically scrapped the car and destroyed the car SOS program for good because it would have been such a catastrophe. But luckily, it has ended up being one, probably one of the best cars they've built with one of the best modifications they could have done to assist Darren to be able to get in this car and enjoy it again. So as part of the car SOS build, as you will have seen, when they took this Cavalier, they had this one on the driveway and they brought another one to the driveway to put under cover, to trick Darren, to think that his car was still on the drive. Now, what was interesting, which they tell me is, they even went to the fashion of paper mache and a spoiler on the rear. The, the shape of the car was identical because that car never had a spoiler on. So to make it as authentic as it was going to be, they had to add little touches. So when the car was covered up, Darren wouldn't notice that, hold on a minute, that shape there hasn't got a spoiler. Why is that? Everything was done so Darren would not pick up. His car has been taken away and being done by the car SOS lads. So as you can see, beautifully restored Cavalier Turbo. What we've just been discussing is back in the day, these they were never sought after. They were always kind of like, they weren't appreciated as they are now. Nowadays, they've gone through the roof and these things are climbing in value daily. Hence, Darren investing in a second one to in the future possibly restore. But that thing there, he's only collecting money. As much as he's looking sorry for itself, he's just collecting money just sat there. Going on to the special one. Let's go into some little touches that the boys have done. The Cavalier Turbo, obviously the rims, stock. But these nice little machine centre caps for the Card SOS logo, which obviously just something that with people wouldn't recognise of the car. The one thing we do pick up on, me and Darren, and Darren does hate it, is for some strange reason, they've put the badges on. Not right. Because if you look at this badge, it's supposed to have the darker outline, where this has got the lighter outline. And they're in the wrong place. Because if you look at this one, which is factory, you can see the placement, that's how they should be. But Darren will get that sorted out in the future. We are being very picky. The car has been restored to a very, very nice standard. And again, the little logo on the back showing the car SOS and the Rickwood Motorsport. Before I even came to see this, I did expect this to have, I'll be perfectly honest, Darren's sat watching. I expected it to have panel gap issues. 
because with the weight of the doors and the way they're going to swing I expected the panel gaps to be quite off to be fair because to get the panel gaps all the way down all symmetrical even just on a crash repair job you know it takes some skill but this thing to have them doors done the panel gaps are perfect you would never know that this has suicide doors on this side other than the slight cutout on the bottom there which is obviously the locking mechanism for this side of the door it is stunningly clean the paint looks beautiful everything has been done right other little touches on the car obviously the front mount intercooler darren's super chuffed that they didn't box this off and put it back to a standard uh cavalier turbo bumper because that was one thing he would have wanted to keep which obviously they have kept which makes this has this this aggressive look on the front now the story of this engine was the car ran perfectly when they picked it up it was super quiet super crisp and the actual production crew said to rick do not strip that engine it is as good and as you know just tart it up paint it and get it to look pretty when the production crew had signed off for the christmas period rick went in stripped the engine and fully rebuilt it i think what I, from from discussing with darren this car rick himself has a bit of a personal personal attachment to the build and has wanted to go the extra mile he still keeps in touch today and wanted to do it right for darren so he could have this car so it was a fully usable and he would never have no issues with it the car was finished the filming was done it was presented back to darren he'd got his car now you would suspect there would be kind of no technical aftercare but what's been nice is to hear is rick wood has constantly been in touch with darren he's upgraded the turbo rebuilt the turbo because it was smoking for no charge he's been out and done additional work on the car for no charge he has gone the extra mile for after filming to maintain the car for Darren. He has also been passed many times to check in, to see how he is and to see how the car's going. Because it was quite easy for them guys to go, well, we've done the build, we've got our footage, here's your car back and kind of dumped it on, on the owners for them to sort out. But really nice touch. That's why I say... I think Rick has got a bit of an, an, an attachment to this build with doing the book, the picture and the aftercare. And I think in the future, he's going to carry on looking after this for the future for many years to come. So Darren can enjoy it and the car can live on for many years. It's been an absolute pleasure to see this car up close because what you see on television, never know what the, the, the attention to detail is. Are they thrown together? Are they as crisp as they look? Because I've seen cars from, there was a TV show called Chop Shop, and I went to see one of them cars at the NEC once, and it was horrendous. Obviously looked good for television, was bad in real life. So we've not been able to see many car SOS builds. You don't know what the fit and finish is like. But I can say this one is pretty damn good. And the engineering behind the simplicity of how this works is amazing. It's been a pleasure to come and meet Darren. It's been a pleasure to come and see the car. And I will say in the future, you will see this car with me and Darren going up the quarter mile very, very soon. So we'll sign it off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.